So welcome back. I um, hope you had a nice break. Um, we finished up talking about um, you know, what your might, role may or may not be um, in terms of setting an example. Um, but I want to get a little more just on, on you right now. Um, what was your, you mentioned your, you pitched 97 miles an hour, but I don't know if that was your best speed or that was your high school speed. Um, so the, I know. Okay. Yeah, the fastest fastball that I ever threw was 98.4 miles an hour. Unfortunately, we can't round up in baseball, so that can't be 99. Unfortunately, that's still 98. But yeah, so I, I did that probably five or six years ago, 2014, or I guess that would be seven years ago now, a long time ago. Um, but yeah, that was my my fastest fastball. I would say my best pitch. I, I threw a slider and I threw a splitter at the time. So I was a I was a guy who, who went out there and just threw as hard as he could and tried to get guys out and just have some fun doing it. I'm guessing you were successful at getting them out. From, from time to time. Surprisingly, I actually got beat up a lot, but I think you have to get beat up to have some amount of success too. So, um, and did you have, you, you mentioned the two, uh, pitches, but did you have a favorite? Depending on the day. Okay. Fair <laughs> yeah, that's, 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 as, that's as easy as a question Ans answers I can give you. Yeah. I didn't have a favorite by any means. I was not a, I was not, we, we would call him pitching a feel guy. I didn't like have tons of uh, like sensory perception or feel on my pitches. I literally just went out there and and just threw the pitches that I thought I had and then just threw them as hard as I could. So it makes it so. harder to read you, I would imagine then. Yeah. And it also makes it easier if I'm not doing well to continue to not do well. So <laughs> oh, I can't imagine something coming at me at almost a hundred miles an hour. It's scary, but people can hit it and hit it really far. <laughs> I can't imagine even seeing it, but yeah. Um, do me one favor. Could you yeah. back up for a second? Cause I want to see your full shirt. Nice, nice, congratulations, congratulations. Oh, wow, everything. Do you have your names on your shirts too? Not this one, no. Some shirts we have our names on, but yeah, no, not on this one. Um, so is Team Israel going to the Olympics and will you be playing for them? Team Israel has qualified for the Olympics in 2021. They're supposed to be the 2020 Olympics. I am on the final, uh, the, the technical final roster, which is uh, 35 players. They will bring 24 active players to the Olympics. So I will have an event here in the next month or so where I will have to earn my spot on the roster. But that's very similar to most Olympic teams, Olympic events. You have to, you know, a group of players um, qualifies for the event and then they will generally open that uh, roster, whatever the sport is to uh, additional members of that Olympic committee, Olympic uh, athletic organization to hopefully make the best team possible for that Olympic event. Um, and hopefully I, I make that cut. I think I have a really good chance, but you know, anything is possible. So how many pitchers will they bring? I think, tw I think 12, maybe 13 at the most. Oh, so pitchers, pitchers. Yeah, 12 or 13. Mm -hmm. Half the people mm -hmm. going are going, wow, wow. Learn something new every day. Yeah. Um, what do you think the prospects of winning it all are or winning? Well, there's a 50% chance of us winning a medal. There's only six teams participating. So, <laughs> okay. uh, you know, I think it would be fair to say we have an expectation to medal, you know, I, you know, baseball is one of those sports where on any given day, anything can happen. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, even if we're facing the best team in the world, you know, that, that team has to go out there and they have to hit, they have to pitch, they have to get people out. Um, they will have the advantage of having, you know, the Japanese team will have the advantage of having Japanese spectators in the stands. Whereas we won't have any spectators in the stands. No other country will have spectators in the stands. So they will have a significant advantage when it comes to that. I, I do think that there will still be a stadium size restriction. So they're not going to have 50,000 fans. Mm -hmm. They might have 10,000, which is still going to be a lot. But at that, at that amount, we can also feed off that energy, which is great. When it gets to about 40 or 50,000 all cheering against you, it hurts and it becomes yeah. a lot yeah. more challenging. But um, the, the, the smaller numbers, you can allow that to work for you a little bit better. Is there anything else you can do to kind of boost your morale, your team morale? Um, 
short of having more spectators on your side? Score first. Okay. Be the first team to score. That's the best thing you could possibly do for your team. That doesn't, if you don't score first, that doesn't mean you're going to lose, but scoring first is the best possible thing you can do. No matter what the situation, where you're playing, who you're playing against. If your team scores first, changes boost, changes everything. Um, are our family members allowed to come to Japan with you? Oof. And how long is the trip? The, the, the entire stay. The, yeah, it, how long would you, you be out of the country? If you, if you continue to win, that turns it into about two and a half, three weeks. Long time. Um, but it means you're winning in the Olympics, so that's okay. Good point. Good point. Um, going back to college, were your teammates supportive of your Judaism? They were not unsupportive. Okay. You know, I, I think there was more of a, a neutrality there. You know, I, I did get a lot of comments or digs about why I wouldn't participate in, you know, those Sunday church experiences, you know, <laughs> during the season. Um, in college, nobody was, uh, was rude or offensive to me. It was more questions as to why, you know, I think pro ball things got a little bit, you know, you're dealing with, you know, veterans who have been not, not, uh, uh, military veterans, but professional veterans of the, of the industry who, who might be more crass, might be a little bit more rude to rookies or younger players, or, and they might be more willing to say, you know, crack some jokes here and there about, you know, Jewish stereotypes and whatnot, but things like that just kind of roll off. You know, I've been, I, I, I'd heard them from my Jewish friends forever, you know, so those were things that, you know, are things that, you know, whether they're right or wrong, it's things that, you know, you've heard before. So there was nothing that I ever heard that, you know, and it's, it's awful to say there was nothing that I ever heard that really like made me go home at night and say like, wow, I can't believe that guy said that, or that girl said that, or, or like, I can't, you know, I can't believe this is happening to me in this weird city or state. Yeah. That, that never really happened. You know, I, I, I always want to have like a better story and say like, I stood up against, you know, anti-Semitism, you know, while I played, but you know, it just, for me, it didn't really happen. It's okay. It's a good thing. Yeah. No, I, I'm, I'm very glad that that, I didn't have to. Um, so in the movie, you, you did know that your wife is not Jewish. And I was wondering how that's, a, how she supports your Jewish identity. And you mentioned that you have children. How are they being raised? Um, is there Jewish observance or Christian observance in the home? My wife makes the best chocolate babka. She makes the best potato latkes. She, she makes the best stuffed cabbage and stuffed cabbage soup. She also makes unbelievable matzo ball soup. I don't know if I said that. I forget. Um, you did not yet. I did not, yeah. Um, so she has absorbed a lot of the things that, you know, I grew up with. Um, mm -hmm. And I don't tell my mom, which you, I'm sure. Hi, mom. I'm sure you're going to watch this. Um, she does a great job of, of, of keeping a lot of the traditions alive. Mm -hmm. Um but beyond that, you know, we don't go to church. We don't go to synagogue. We do observe all of the holidays, both Jewish and Christian alike. Um, because, you know, as a family, we believe that as long as you believe in God, you know, there's, there's a lot, there's a lot there. Um, it's, and, you know, I think over the years, a lot of people get jaded by religion, bad experiences, good experiences, whatnot. And we've had such good experiences on both of our sides that we want our kids to have and appreciate both of those you know we don't want to we don't want to be the ones to take one away from the other you know we want them to be happy and appreciative of everything that that made us who we are and who and and what is making them special as children as well so um you know i think that question still has a lot of, of things to be asked you know coming forward going forward because you know where we live right now there aren't many synagogues you know there aren't mm -hmm. many rabbis around to, to help facilitate some questions that we might have in the future even though zoom does exist um going into a synagogue and asking questions is always going to be easier um but our kids are being raised with the best of both of who me and, and my wife are and that's you know the, the most we can ask for i think is a great answer um so do you still have bonds and relationships with the team Israel teammates? Um, yeah, about, I get, I get about, we get about a hundred messages a day on our, on our WhatsApp channel. Yeah. Cool. And my best, and I, my best friend ever I played on team Israel with, I, I met him playing for team Israel and we're still best friends to this day. We talk by the phone every, 
not every day right now because he's currently playing. So he's a little bit busier than I am at the moment. But <laughs> yeah, he's, you know, we talk every day. Mm. I'm going to guess you don't have that same relationship with your uh, MLB teammates. No, I don't. And, and I, I think I say it in the movie and I don't want to keep giving things away. But, you know, when you play for Team Israel, you, you're not playing for the name on the back of your jersey. You're playing for the name on the front of the jersey. You know, everyone's there for the same purpose. When you're playing professional baseball, it's kind of dog eat dog. You know, mm -hmm. you know, everyone's looking to get to the big leagues. And, you know, if someone trips and falls, it's like not a bad thing. You know, like that. Oh, that guy fell. <laughs> unless it's you. Like that, yeah, unless it's me. You know, that is not something that I ever tried to do when I played. Obviously, professionally, if it happened, it did happen but you know we're masters of our own circumstance you know things happen and it, it helps us get there it helps us get there but you know when you play for team israel we're all playing just to win and just to support israel and our identity so it's not like you know if i play better i'm going to make the israeli olympic major league all-star team i'm gonna we're all you know we're all doing the same thing at the same time for the same end goal so it's it's easier to maintain friendships relationships and 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 just be happier <laughs> Um, it, it just raised another question for me. What, if any, economic impact does Team Israel have on Israel? So when we played for the World Baseball Classic, we had a, uh, well, beyond fundraising and notoriety, which brought some money to Israel, the Israeli Baseball Association at the time, um, winning as many games as we did, getting as far as we did in the tournament, won us a pot of, you know, whether it's half a million dollars, I don't know, I don't know exactly what it was, but it, it, there was a, a large six figure sum that the organization team Israel baseball did win. And a lot of that money was put into the development of baseball fields and infrastructure for the sports community in Israel. Um, so there is a definite, I wouldn't, I definitely wouldn't say a great financial um, boost to whether it's the economy or the sports economy there, but there is definitely something. And, and I think, I mean, unfortunately, the, I would say the biggest impact is just going to be, you know, the observance of, you know, who's playing, you know, mm -hmm. seeing Israel on the chest, uh, the Israeli flag uh, with the biggest delegation ever in the Olympics, uh, participating in the World Baseball Classic against uh, traditional powers and our team competing, you know, and playing and winning is, you know, you know, I know that doesn't do anything for putting meals on the table, but it does a lot for, you know, recognition and, and putting a good face on a, on a country that, that could always use some good publicity, you know. Thank you for that. Um, so let's get back to your career. Yep. Um, what are you currently doing? Where do you go from here? What do you aspire to? Um, and do you think baseball will always be a part of your life? So currently I am working for the Chicago Cubs. I am the rehab pitching coordinator and uh, pitching coach for the organization. I live in Gilbert, Arizona. I have, I non pandemic. I go to the field, the complex here in Gilbert and Mesa, Arizona, 360 days a year. I work with pitchers who are injured, most surgical surgery, uh, major injuries, and I help kind of nurture them back to life. I'm not their doctor. I am there on field uh, rehabilitator help them you know get over any issues that they might have and um, I had gotten hurt a lot when I played so I thought that that position for me was a really good um, you know uh, jump start into my professional career on the, this side of the game mm -hmm. um, I'm also currently training for the Olympics so I, I'm, I'm running throwing working out every single day um, and assuming I make the team hopefully I make the team I will Part, do that on, through the end of July. Uh, games are the last week of July, uh, the first week, first two weeks of August, and then following that, I'll be you know back to full time, you know, mm -hmm. with the, with the Cubs. Um, in terms of staying in baseball, I I, I love baseball. Uh, I think Stephanie would be upset if I didn't do something with baseball, whether it was every day or every week or or, or whatnot. Um, it's something that's, you know, as you can see behind me, like there's pictures all over my house in every single room of, of, of baseball of thing. And yes, there's a few pictures of myself, but there's also pictures of Nolan Ryan on that back wall of, of a, a few number of things of signed autograph balls of Mara and Rivera and, you know, I don't know, Reggie Jackson back there. I don't exactly remember who's all back there, but yeah, I, I, baseball will always be part of what I do. I don't know if I'm always going to stay in professional baseball or college baseball or, you know, getting back to the major leagues would be really cool. Being a major league pitching coach would be fantastic. I don't know if that's, you know, where my future is going to lie, but 
you know, uh, you know, I've, I've kind of enjoyed the last few years being at home, getting to eat breakfast and dinner with my family. It's, it's been a nice change from the previous 10 years. So I'm getting kind of spoiled at the moment. I hear you. That's like what Zoom is like for the rest of the world. Yeah. Work from home. Uh, speaking of Zoom, will you, um, I'm inviting you to participate in updates um, on your progress, either with the Olympics or your teams, um, just some sort of update, an update on Team Israel in, in general. Yeah, I'd love to be able to, to hop on and get an update over the summer, as long as I can hop on the Zoom and not forget. <laughs> <laughs> we, we can wait till the fall if we have to. Um, is there anything else that I didn't ask that you want to share with us? That's a hard question. I'm not a journalist. Um, no, not, not that I know of. I think you did a great job asking a lot of questions, all the, the hard hitting questions. I don't, you know, we can always ask some more in a follow up and, and, you know, after Thank we you. see it. And then if we, uh, after, after, if everybody sees the movie and anybody has any questions after the movie, we can always ask, you know, do a follow up after the movie questionnaire too. Thank you. Well, the, the film is mid May. So okay. I'm hoping you're going to be really busy. Uh, well, if I'm really busy with the Cubs, that's a bad thing. That means a lot of, no, no, I that, meant... means, that means a lot of people are getting hurt. Yes. If I make I'm the team, training. Yes. If, if I make the team, I will be in full force training by the end of May. Yeah. So, yeah. Fingers crossed. Thank you. Thank you so much. And we will um, pick You're this welcome. up at a later date. You are welcome. Thank you so much for having me. Yeah.